tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure what our or the guys' movements will be yet tomorrow, so we'll get this one in the bank just in case. So we'll start with Dan Cherney. Congratulations, Travis. Uh, you know, look, what is it, nine months or so ago that uh, you, you dropped from the, the contract list. Um, do you feel as though, in some respects, the selectors have been vindicated in making your work for it or, or in hindsight that you've sort of proven proven the wrong a bit? Does, does that sort of go into your thinking at all in a moment like this? No, nah, not at all. Um, those decisions were made, the conversations were had. I went back and worked on what I needed to work on and um, continued to try to perform the best way I could for South Australia and, and then know that the opportunity and the conversations that were had were around that first test. We still They still see me in that position, obviously a T20 World Cup and, and, and a white ball focus to that contract list um, pushed me out, um, disappointing as it is, but um, the eye was still to the first test and they still see me having an impact in the test and make sure that I did every everything I possibly could to best prepare myself for that. And um, yeah, it's nice to be able to repay that and then get the opportunity and, and play as well as I have. Andrew McClashen. Hey Travis, um, just going back to your stand with, um, with pardon me, with, with Cam Green on on the first day and just looking slightly ahead to the future. I mean, is it quite exciting to think you two might be forming the the future of Australia's middle order for the next? Obviously, I know that things can happen, but the next few few years ahead, and is he someone you think you can sort of back, uh, play well with uh, alongside going forward? Well, Greeny's definitely doing that. Um, I hope that I can just ride the wave with him. Um, he is an unbelievable cricketer. Um, his first class record, and he's got a lot of runs against South Australia. What I've seen of Cameron Green is, um, yeah, unbelievable. He's going to play a lot of cricket. I know we say that, and people are going to say, "Oh, he's going to play a lot of cricket." It's easy to say it. He's got obviously going work extremely hard and do that. He's the type of character that works extremely hard at his craft. He's a high thinker of the game. Um, having played with him in the last 12 months, I've absolutely loved every single minute of it. He's an exceptional bloke. Um, and the way he's, he's worked great over the series to be maybe questioned a little bit throughout the series um, for a young guy who hasn't played a hell of a lot of um, test cricket and, and, and still not a hell of a lot of first-class cricket, to be able to take that on board, work on his game, um, and get the results he has over the last three tests is, uh, just shows the character he is. And I know everybody in the dressing room absolutely loves playing with him. And just something that uh, Pat said when he was speaking to us a few minutes ago, he, he mentioned that um, he doesn't really worry about how you might sort of, the shots you might play that end up being your dismissals. Has that given you a huge amount of confidence that you're backed to play that way? And, and did that help you play the way you did on the first day in this game? Yeah, yeah, Pat's been exceptional over this series and, and the conversations I've had him have linked up um, really well with the conversation I had with Tim Nielsen at Saka. And um, I went through a period of time where I understand that dismiss dismissals might not look the best and I might get caught a third man or flap at a ball. And obviously I don't want to do that. Um, my default as a batter technically is if I nick the ball, I throw my hands through it um, because it hasn't hit my bat um, and it's a mistake. And I try to sort of catch the mo catch the the moment as such and um, it doesn't look pretty I understand that um, but it's understanding that no dismissal ever looks pretty um, you look at some of the dismissals in this game from high quality batters um, yeah any outs a bad out um, I've got to understand that and I think that's one moment that's one thing that's in my game it's like okay if I nick it it's not going to look great Melbourne I was disappointed in my shot and I probably as I nick it and um, exaggerate it and make it look a little bit worse but um, I try and work extremely hard on that Pat's giving me the confidence to go out and play and he he sort of alluded to that game at the at, at the Optus Stadium. He goes, look, if you take the game on and you get done at third man a couple of times and, you, and you're playing the right way, it, it, it's no skin off his nose and he backs me 100%. And that probably gave me the confidence going in the series to be myself and play the situation I've seen it. And you look back and go, okay, the little moments of, of conversations that you look back at the series and go, that might have changed something. And I think that definitely the confidence he's given me is the blueprint, obviously, going out and then performing. Cheers, Travis. Thank you. Rambo. Rainbow. Hi, Trent. Um, congrats on the medal. Um, Thanks, mate. Just for that question, um, your next sort of right, the test cricket is going to be in the subcontinent. We haven't played a lot of cricket, I gather. Um, do you sort of look to prepare or play differently over there, or do you just, sort of, again, back where you play here and see if it translates to those conditions? Yeah, I'll, I'll look at what the expected conditions may look like um, over the next sort of couple of weeks and know what I have to do more mindset-wise to prepare, prepare for that. Um, 
I'm hearing that like conditions in Pakistan can be obviously challenging. They've got a lot of fast bowlers, um, whether it's green and seeming around or, or spin friendly. Um, I said, I, I guess we'll wait and see what the conditions will get, um, temperature wise and whatnot. I've heard different people, different things. No one's traveled there for a long time. So, um, like any tour, um, same as Sri Lanka, I think you look at ways you, ways you may be able to counteract obviously Australia we know so well and that, that planning probably didn't go as, as, as hard or as in depth because I've been playing in Australia and playing shield cricket so over the next couple of weeks I'll definitely look at the the, the places I can get better at I'll probably go home and, and work with Vin and and Dizzy and then and, and Steve Stubbings at home and and and, and use JL and Jeff Vaughan and, and Diver and, and Ronnie and I've got so many resources at my peril it's it's amazing to have so I'll I'll, I'll dive into every one of those um, minds and, and, and continue to work on my game. Last couple here, guys. Louis Cameron, and we'll finish off with Benny. Just picking up on that, Trav, about um, playing against Pakistan. You made your debut against Pakistan and, and had a fair bit of responsibility straight away, I guess, with with Dave and, and Steve missing that. Um, do you feel like you'll you'll you're better placed to maybe um, now handle a similar kind of responsibility, maybe? Yeah, I think every time you play your test cricket, it's another learning opportunity. Um, Sounds as cliche as it is, is, but I think over 19 test matches going into this series, I'd, I'd, I'd continue to learn each time. And in moments, it wasn't great. In moments, I didn't take my opportunity. That happens. That's the game of cricket. Um, it's the same as South Australia. Over a long period of time, I've been able to slowly develop and get better and continue. To, and I feel like I'm a really consistent, strong shield player. The challenge now is I've had this series and, and the challenge now is to continue to do that and try and embed myself in this team, try to be a leader in this team try to be as consistent as a person, as a player, as I possibly can and, and make that step as I have in shield career now in test career. And it's going to be tough. There's going to be definitely going to be, there's definitely too many times where that's going to be extremely difficult and the pressure's going to be on and it's a high spotlight. I've got to make sure I treat myself and continue to work on those things and um, and just be as consistent as I possibly can. Last one, guys. Sorry, Todd. Oh, sorry, Todd, do you mind man. if I... Yeah, I'm just minute. going to ask about the um, the pitches in this series, Trav. Um, and people have said that they've been, you know, really tough to bat on. Take your, your batting glasses off for a second. Do you think it's good for cricket in Australia? Would you like to see them as juicy as, as this in future years? Depends who we're playing. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I think they were challenging. And I feel like there was moments definitely there where I think... We won a couple of tosses in the right times as well, and um, or, or we did what we wanted to be doing on the first day. Um, probably this test was probably the only only time that we didn't get to do what we wanted to do. Um, I know Brisbane was probably 50-50, but you never disappointed. We weren't disappointed in bowling. Um, we would have batted, but um, we probably didn't expect it. Yeah, there's probably more grass than we, what we got, and I think we got a great series. Um, and it was challenging for Baton, but... I think we've got the high, with our high quality bowling, it probably suits us even more than the flat wickets and trying to grind and grind and grind and grind and puts pressure on Starkey or, or Camo um, over a long series, Hoff, Bolo now. Like if that was flat, we, we really put pressure on our bench. We probably got to rest some guys, but having the greener wickets probably suit us even more because we know that the guys can roll out and do what they did tonight or do what they did in Melbourne, have a lighter test, have a week off and can play five test matches. And I think the durability of our bowlers will be shown if we play on wickets um, like they have been. Benny Hall, last one. Hey, Travis. Um, Benny? Mate, um, people were, you know, sort of in awe of the 100 you made in Brisbane, but I guess that came at a time when the team was on top. Um, and, you know, the question was, would, would you do that if you came in at three for 12, which is what you had to do in this game? Um the fact that you were able to go out and play that same sort of innings, um, you know, what does that mean for you when you do go overseas and, you know, you're playing in foreign conditions where you can be put in those difficult situations? Yeah, well, I think early in my test career, like a lot of career, when we played on some juicy wickets in shield career, I found myself in that position. I a lot of te- a lot of my early test matches when we were in 19 in the Ashes or I guess Dubai um, and a few times throughout the summer, I've walked in in some tricky situations and um, obviously played a different way, but that was the way I felt like that was the best for the team or the scenario. Um, I think a lot of credit goes to Manus in that in the first day. He he was brave, um, a lot braver than who I was. And I know that there was a little chat at the drinks break about how we were sort of talking about potentially going after the bowlers or whatnot. We were actually just enjoying the moment. And I kept saying, oh, I'll play the line. If you play and miss it, that's okay. Look for a long half boy, look for a scoring opportunity. And he was sort of like, now nah, let's get after him. So um, it was quite humorous in that in that aspect of things. So 
Um, a lot of credit goes to him. He took the pressure off me. I just batted it and, and did what I've been doing for the series. Um, there was no premeditated idea of going after him or trying to score at the rate that we did. But seeing the seeing the great opportunity to try and score runs, knowing that England ball going to bowl really well in stages and beat the bat. So I know going away from if that's going to be spin away from way and I want on away series or or seam or or swing, the same same method um, is is for me. I'll, I'll play strong cricket shots. Strong defence. If I'm beaten, I'm beaten. I'm trying not to, and try trying to be hard to get out and try to look for scoring opportunities. And if that presents itself, it presents itself. And, and if that's the situation that's needed, it's needed. So uh, I'm really pleased with the way I was able to, I guess, um, combat all every situation, take all the information in, and, and try and best execute that. And mate, I just wanted to ask you about Alex Carey. You obviously know him very well. Um, will he take a lot of confidence from that today? Like an important knock and. Uh, a couple of really sharp catches on the side where he, he put a couple down. Love that catch. Yeah. I, I, like anyone, I'm, oh, he's my best mate. So um, I want to see him do well. Um, I, he's had some tricky situations to come into as well. He's had to play the team role. And I think one thing I know with Abba Alex is he's such a team player. He has no hesitation in one opening the batting in Brisbane, two going out before we declare. Um, he's a selfless player. He's a selfless player within the team. I know he works extremely hard. Um but he also wants to do as best he can. I know he's disappointed that he would have let a couple of chances go. Um, I felt I felt like he kept beautifully throughout the series, and and a couple of and they've highlighted a couple of moments. I think all in all, he's had an exceptional series. Um, and he's battling some tricky situations. He take a lot of confidence for another team. Absolutely love playing with him. Obviously, I absolutely love playing with him. Played Test group and best mate is something pretty special. Um, and I just can't wait for him to to get that opportunity. I felt like today was going to be. I think he got a little bit of luck today, and there was a luck sort of he sort of needed. And deserved as well for the series that he's had. Um, it's just disappointing he didn't go on with. It. I know he's disappointed, but I think he showed moments throughout the series on how dangerous he could be at seven. Brilliant. Well said, Travis. And thanks everyone for joining us. And um, we'll catch up with you guys, uh, I guess, during the White Ball series, if not before. Thank thanks, you. guys. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Paul. Thanks,